My name is Timo Honkela and I'm very happy to welcome Ville Tuulos visiting from United States and we are discussing here in a warm summerly day in Espoo, Finland matters related to artificial intelligence, neural networks, machine learning in kind of in the big picture too and the methodologies. So uh, thanks for having me. Thank you and it's it's really happy to, that you came here and we had a chance to meet here as you have been already how is it you have been in California, Palo Alto and elsewhere in San Francisco? It's Eleven years. Eleven years now, yeah. yes. So you moved there when you had been working first uh, like University of Helsinki, you had a work right. and then you moved to Nokia. Right. And yeah. then Nokia had started to go down, but you were working uh, for Nokia in California for some years. Right, right. So they founded a research center in Palo Alto, I think it was around like 2006, 2007, and it was a new lab with a very, very interesting mandate at the time, of course. I mean, this was actually the, I remember joining um, NRC in Palo Alto exactly on the, in the summer when iPhone came out in mm -hmm. 2007. Of course, like iPhone was no threat at the time, but I mean, Nokia had a big vision, which turned out to be very accurate about like how the uh, mobile phones and especially the data collected from mobile phones will, will change the world. And, and the lab was founded, especially with the mandate that imagine that we have all this data, how do we actually process the data, well, what kind of infrastructure we need. Mm. And then on the other hand, like uh, what are the applications, especially like machine learning, artificial intelligence related applications for, for mobile data. So. And there would be, of course, a lot to discuss, but maybe I would like to pick up one thing you had. You were in a central kind of uh, position in building a system that was kind of uh, widely exhibited in the US, I think was it uh, in New York or wherever That's you right. were showing the yes. kind of images and so on. So could you please yes. so, talk, um, tell about that? Uh, so like I mentioned, I mean, uh, around even before it, like 2007, maybe onwards from 2005, there was this idea that like mobile data, uh, especially different kind of multimodal data about lo location and like uh, images, mm -hmm. sounds that we can collect from the real world. Uh, the possibilities are really infinite. However, at the time, uh, of course, smartphones weren't the thing in the US. So, I mean, just getting access to the data would have been hard. And of course, there were privacy concerns. So, so what we decided to do is to organize a game, an urban, urban um, pervasive game that would like uh, entice people uh, to take photos and, and, and so forth. And, uh, and like the, the primary effect of that is that, well, I mean, like we can organize this fun event in, in the New York City. And we actually, thanks to the amazing resources that Nokia had, uh, we could like rent the, the massive displays in the times in Times Square, and uh, and like we built this game. And uh, as a secondary effect, we we got access to a, like quite nice data set about real world mobile data that was really ahead of its time. At yes. The time. So, in some sense, one can I guess it's fair to say that Nokia really prepared the market. So in Finland, it was very commonplace to see every second person or, or even more were just walking with their mobile phones in their hands, yeah. even with a much lesser number of applications, but it was kind of very common to use the mobile phone, whereas in the US and so on, so it was still not so commonplace. Exactly, and actually like there's a, another very interesting aspect, is just the social behavior, Yes, that, um, that like the, the idea of the game was that people take photos and they can like a, we actually like uh, like uh, applied different filters to the photos so they always look nice, like kind of what Instagram does these days. And like people could create stories. That's yes. why the name of the, the game was Manhattan Story Mashup. That you take photos and you make these little stories out of your everyday life. And, and imagine this was like just in the summer when iPhone came out, before app stores, before anything. And like I, I remember like players who participated in the game um, giving feedback that like one of the, the most interesting things was that they were able to do things in the public that they wouldn't do otherwise because they have this perfect excuse. Yes. And like <laughs> also like you see in the changes in the social behavior that were facilitated by these new mobile phones, it was really fascinating. Of course, I guess like I, I would be a billionaire if I had like really understand how big this is going to be. But like, yes, but I mean, but, uh, definitely this, it started to be in the air at the time. Yes. And so uh, regarding that particular thing, I, I would actually like to mention here that when I've been working with this peace machine concept, so it's this kind of idea of how to use technology to kind of promote some social change Absolutely, and, yeah. and both the kind of society and then individuals. 
and I guess that's something that when you um, refer or mention this idea that the mobile phone can help people to actually change their behavior, of course it could be towards the wor worse or better, but so they can be encouraged to do something else. So what kind of experiences did you have there? So you were there in New York and so, so you saw the kind of social activities there, so is there something specific that you would remember from that? Well, I, I do remember, of course, I mean, like, there were actually like two, two of us like working on the game, so I mean, given, given the size and, and the visibility of the game, it was amazing that it was made with such a small resources, so yes. I was really like heads down, like, really like, kind of holding my breath to make sure that actually like everything worked perfectly, so yes. it was pretty much like in haste, I mean, like during the time when the experiment happened. But yes, I, I, I really think that like um, the, 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 there was really the kind of the, the tangible feeling that, 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 that like this, this, this is going to be the future. Yes. And, and, and like kind of seeing kind of the, the, the just possibilities that these like devices could have. And exactly like you said, I mean, it was so obvious that like not only in technological point of view, but also in, in, in societal and like behavioral point of view and like all kinds of like applications we could have like when, when, once we have the devices, once we have the data. So it, it, it is kind of, in a way, I mean, like it feels that like the, the possibilities that we saw at the time and the kind of the situation where we have converged today, I mean, there are like still so many things we could be doing. Yes, so we are, in some sense, we are in the beginning more than Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So there is much, and that's definitely uh, kind of understandably, it's a concern for many people who don't have the resources and experience and so on to see what is going on and what is going to happen. Right. So, and my kind of goal has been to a little bit calm down people, many AI people saying that it's not that big thing, kind of even nowadays, what it kind of people fear it to be. Right. On the other hand, there are many capacities, the, what is the kind of, what is called weak AI, so even that weak AI can be used to kind of make many societal kind of things, changes, but they can also be positive, not only Oh, kind of absolutely. <coughs> so, uh, actually that's something uh, that I could ask you. Have you encountered during the past 10 or 20 years something kind of after this, what we discussed, this Nokia experience and that New York experience? So right. is there something that you have seen, something interesting taking place that you could talk about? Of course you have been kind of working in companies where you can't tell about all the right. things, but is there something <coughs> that you would have seen or you would kind of be able to kind of comment on this matter? Yeah, <coughs> well, uh, well, I mean, on the one hand, I mean, there are, of course, like many technical developments. I mean, it's just, I mean, overall, I mean, the fact that like artificial in intelligence and machine learning, well, I mean, just the fact that you can say the phrase artificial intelligence aloud again, I mean, that is, that is quite a change and, uh, and the fact that it is so, hot uh, these days that, like it really I mean it was more like a like a like a stepchild activity in, in academia and then now yes. that it is I mean like it's just amazing to, to see the billboards like uh, next to 101 I mean in, in Silicon Valley and it's all about machine learning these days mm -hmm. and even the largest companies in the world have announced that like artificial intelligence and machine learning is is, is in the core of their business it, it is like you said I mean at the same time it is extremely encouraging and like I'm sure that like kind of given the resources that's being put on the field, I mean, like we will see some really big advantages and, and, and advancements. But then, on the other hand, like uh, given the commercial interests of these companies, it, it feels that in a sense it is it is limiting. And I would truly hope that like uh, that also other other initiatives like the one that you have been leading, I mean, like would really gain traction and and like kind of benefit like from all these advancements and all the all the resources that are being put on this like a pretty pretty mundane questions on like uh, how to how to uh, choose ads to, to show to, to be shown to people or like recommend movies and, and so forth so it, it is I mean there's definitely a societal imbalance between between there's like a few applications that like uh, really I mean seem to be getting attention of the really the almost the smartest people of the generation yes. versus all the other all the other questions that we could be solving so, as well and many of those <coughs> things are like you are referred to societal they are deeply philosophical all the uh, questions, question, uh, thousands of years, yeah. even related <coughs> to religion, the values, and so on. So that's that's something. Actually, regarding that, I remember just some months ago, one of the Finnish old AI people, 
Jouko Seppänen, mm. who was very uh, kind of central person in the Finnish right. AI society, kind of responsible and kind of making many dozens of book to books in AI right. and related fields to be published. So he uh, passed away, is it, la uh, let's say last year, and then it was for the first time in the church I uh, heard a priest to mention the phrase artificial intelligence. <laughs> yeah, that must be the first. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe among the must be the first.